On a cold and snowy Saturday in January, Westminster High School's CTE teacher Robert Ferguson and his Project Lead the Way Aerospace Engineering class took part in an out-of-this-world experiment. Meeting at the Deer Trail School, they gathered to launch 16 student-designed experiments into the stratosphere. Even the locals came out to have a look. Using the expertise of the Edge of Space Sciences group of volunteers, the students readied their Arduino experiments, which included GPS, temperature, pressure, and altitude, to name a few, all under the watchful eye of Mr. Ferguson. So as soon as you power up your unit, you get it in there and you get it all sealed up, you're gonna put the string through the middle of your guy and we'll tie it up to the weather balloon and then once everybody's good, we'll let it go. When we walk out, you're gonna pick up your payload, you're gonna hold your payload. This project, an industry-sponsored opportunity in conjunction with NASA, allowed students to compare their data with information from one of NASA's ER-2 high-altitude research planes. So you're gonna hold your payload out away from you, and when, the, when it's time to come, the balloon's gonna kinda of lift it up out of your hands. You don't wanna hold it, and you don't wanna throw it. With a final check of the ground wind speed, the time had finally come. With the dozen scientific payloads secure and everyone in position, the hydrogen-filled weather balloon was brought out, carefully connected to the line, and the countdown was on. Three, two, one. And into the sky it went, rising quickly in the chilly morning air. Now, it was up to the chase team, using radio communications to track their experiments and, hopefully, meet the balloon on the ground for a safe recovery. We'll get off at the line the next and go down Highway 71. We're doing good, we're, just, we're hanging right behind you. The balloon was able to reach a height of nearly 90,000 feet before it finally ruptured sending the students' delicate experiments hurtling back to Earth. We are at the predicted landing site. We think that we are going to be able to intercept it and actually see it. Yo, you guys see it? <laughs> That's the first time I've ever seen one land. We always get, uh, yeah, landowner permission before we go onto the property. Beautiful. If it was here, we could just recover it and just grab it. Yeah. But since it's over there, we need to ask for approval first. The guys will bring it to you um, on 109, and uh, hopefully that's okay with the students. And it'll wind up in Chris's truck. He'll bring it out and find you guys on 109. Copy that. We'll stand by here. KC0. With all of the payloads collected, the students identified their individual experiments before collecting them and taking a final picture with the entire balloon crew from Edge of Space Sciences. Safely back at school, the students opened their payload boxes to get a first look at the Arduino experiments that they designed and built during remote learning. When it landed, um, it, mine was in pretty good condition, like after the drag and everything. Um, none of the cables were disconnected, everything was fine. Others recovered their data, even if their payload boxes did not fare so well. Everything was mingled around. Our data got, yes, our SD cards got mixed up, so we got to figure that out, but we got it down. And some were unlucky and discovered their SD cards had come loose during the hard landing. Oh, oh I see it. There it is. And oh no, look at So, yep. <sighs> Despite the ups and downs, the excitement was clear and the learning genuine. I had a DHT sensor and a flame sensor on my Arduino. It tests the humidity, the temperature, and the heat index. And then I also had the flame sensor, which tested like how bright the sun was. My experiment was the red Arduino. It had the GPS um, and the tri sensor, which had like a couple components like the uh, longitude, latitude the temperature and um, the time, I believe. When I checked the data, 
it was all pretty fine just because just that little area when it shut off. It measures pressure, temperature, and altitude, and it also has a GPS on it. At one point, though, we plotted the GPS points on Google Maps, and this is like three of them, but all of ours like died in the middle when it got above 40,000 feet in the air because it got like too cold. So after negative 35 degrees, um, it, they don't work very well. Okay, so you can see here, negative 40 degrees picks back up. We capture data all the way down until the landing point here. With their data analyzed, the students participated in a video call with their NASA sponsor, Vidal Salazar. So I'm a project specialist with NASA and I work for the Earth Science Project Office, which is in charge of uh, running all these field campaigns around the world. By looking at the data the students collected, Mr. Salazar showed them how he was able to compare it with the professionals. I downloaded the, the, uh, the sounding for uh, Denver Airport for that morning. And uh, so this is a SQT diagram. I wanted to make sure that I had something to compare it to uh, because the first thing you do is to, to make sure that you have a, a good, good data quality. You launch your balloon just, just east of Denver Looks like your balloon drifted south uh, east, and yes, you know the the winds are coming from the northwest. So you know, okay, so that looks that makes sense. So this is your um, you know your whole data set, and then I broke down into the profiles going up, and the profile as the balloon was coming back to to the earth. So uh, what I did is that I filtered out uh, the data. That, that had changes in temperature that were, you know, more than 10 degrees and changes in altitude for more than 10 meters, for example. I compared that to what the Denver sounding was. So this is the Denver sounding and this is your, your sounding as you go up. I can tell that you, you know, you launch early in the morning and the balloon, you know, came out later in the day. As you know, electronics are very, very picky. Um, you know, if, if the electronics, they give you like this, this instrument will work from, you know, from 10 degrees Celsius to minus 50. And if you go outside of those limits, then the electronics do all kinds of weird stuff. That, that's really interesting that you say that, Vidal, because we actually had one of the students uh, added a GoPro to their payload. And once it got up to, I'm not sure what altitude it was, but I think it was probably above like 30, 40,000 feet my estimate and you can see that they actually had ice crystals form on the outside of the lens which was pretty interesting thank you mr vidal uh we we appreciate you uh coming to come speak with us today and kind of uh you know going over our data and comparing that with what you guys are doing compared to what we're doing and that's awesome that we're able to see um those similarities between what you guys are doing and what we did as a final thank you Mr. Ferguson gave each student who participated a framed $1 bill that has reached the edge of space at an altitude of 89,821 feet. And that's a gift that is truly out of this world. For Wolf TV, I'm Chris Williams.